Adventure and Pumpkin on W four C Y Radio. Wake up, America! It's time for the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Pipe Man. This is the Pipe Man here on the Adventures Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm here with... As You Were. Hi, my name is Brittany. I'm Art. David. And my name is Kenny with As You Were from uh, Army Musical Outreach. See, I love this because I've interviewed your band multiple times, but none of you. Exactly. <laughs> so that's really cool. Like, So let's talk about this a little bit because first time I ever talked to the band that was before you and before them... I never even knew that was a job. I might have joined the Army. I called my son afterwards, who's in for like 20 years. I'm like, why didn't you just go in a band? Like, why'd you do what you did? Right, exactly. And he didn't know either. Yeah. So tell us, for all of you, tell us your story of how you found out about being in the Army and being in a band. Because that's cool. Sure, yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead and start. I'll try to keep it uh, succinct because I get a little long-winded, so just nudge me. But uh, My name's Kenny. I'm the drummer, staff sergeant in the Army, and my story starts way back in 2006. Straight out of high school, I first heard about the fact that the Army even had musicians because my uncle's a Vietnam vet. And so he said, hey, Kenny, I already signed you up with a recruiter. You can take it or leave it. I think my girlfriend had broken up with me at the time, so as a teenager, I was like, I got nothing to lose. <laughs> yeah. I did the audition, passed, and I had to make a choice, so I thought, I'll go into the National Guard. So I did. I was a drummer for the California National Guard for seven years, Wow! all through undergrad, finished college, and then after that, I decided, hey, if I want to finish my master's and have the Army help me out and get the post-911 GI Bill, which is one of the things that they offer to help with education, let me go ahead and do my three years. Eleven years later, here I am still on the active duty side and uh, just beyond happy to have won this broadening assignment to be attached to U.S. Army recruiting um, in this broadening assignment, we call it. So we all enlisted to be musicians in the Army first and foremost. And then on top of that, we had to audition separately, individually, to be part of this team. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And here you are at Aftershock, like one of the biggest festivals in the United States. That's We're beyond excited, yeah. Did it blow your mind when you were out there playing at how much of a crowd there was? Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. When we performed Friday morning, we had an earlier time slot, but we were talking about it just yesterday or this morning amongst ourselves that even that early, within half an hour of gates opening, there was hundreds of people out there and watching us. Some folks that knew of us, some folks that didn't know of us. So we're grateful for the fan base that our predecessors had created, but we're more than excited to gain new fans and to just really push the new music and the new direction of sound we're going in. They're all insanely talented, and so I'm going to pass the mic off, but here's Brittany. So what's your story, Brittany? I grew up as an Army brat. My dad was in the Army for 32 years, and I was always going to be a singer, a musician, so I did not think the Army was my story, right? But I had been working on cruise ships, and COVID hit, and Mm. I did not have a job. And I moved back home with my parents, and because my dad's so in the community of Army, (laughs) we have a friend that was a band liaison that said, oh, Brittany should join the band. And I was like, oh, very interested. Please send me information. And it went pretty fast. And I was in one of the first, like, basic training groups right after COVID, like right after we, well, we were still wearing masks, but right after they started taking basic training again. So it's been pretty cool. It's been a blessing to be a musician and have health insurance. That's a big thing for me. (laughs) There's not many musicians that have health insurance. And then So how'd your dad feel about the whole thing? And did your dad, when he was in, was there such thing as this then? Absolutely. Um, My dad was in as a chaplain, but obviously in around bandsmen a lot. We uh, we knew about Air Force singers, but a singer in the Army is 10 years old now. So that is a rather new development as far as 
what musicians are in the army, but the band's been around as long as the army's been around. We're on the crest, <laughs> on like the army crest has a drum on it. So music has been around as long as the army's been around. It's very integral. And my parents were always really excited uh, when the idea of army came up for me because I think it was shocked them, first of all. They were like, yeah. oh, our little musician is going to go wear a they uniform. They thought you but... were going to be a rebel against yeah. the army. <laughs> yes. Um, so it, I think it's been a really cool and it has brought a lot of cool conversations with my family and an understanding of kind of what my dad did and all he gave while I was growing up, right? Yeah, because you wouldn't really totally know that until you walk in those shoes yourself. Absolutely. How about you? Yeah. So I was probably like the least... Unex or yeah, I guess just very unexpected of me to ever join the army. I never gave it a thought in high school. I didn't even know again about army bands. The only way I knew my older brother, he had joined right out of college the band because he's a saxophone player. And he had told me for a few years like, hey Art, you know you should go join, man. He's like, it's it's a good gig for musicians. And I was just like, I'm not listening to you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like again, like I just like never really thought I could. I I just didn't see myself as a soldier, you know. Like, but I don't know. Times were getting tough. This was in 2019, so it was still before COVID. But I was getting tired of working in warehouses and fast food restaurants, and uh, I got married really young too, at age 20. And I just, I don't know, I, the life was already taking a toll on me, and I just thought I, I wanted to make a change. So I finally just said, all right, I'm putting all the chips in, let's do this army band thing, see what, see what happens. So uh, now, do you think that was like the best decision you ever made? It was made? definitely a really good decision. Again, I'm still not like, I don't know if I'm doing the full 20 yet, still like <laughs> filling it out, you know. But because this job particular, being in this band, is super unique, you know, and like, well, I'll never have this again in another Army band, you know. But yeah. That's cool. Pretty, pretty short and simple in my story. How about you? I'm David. So I joined, I've been about 12 years now. So yeah, after my bachelor's degree in music education, I was looking for opportunities to just play music and not teach. And so here I am, and I thought I'd just do a couple years, but I'm still going. Do any of you imagine that you would be playing a festival like this when you join the Army Band? Definitely not. <laughs> not for me. I, I never thought so. I think, I think in the back of our minds, especially as like uh, more traditional rhythm players, uh, we, you always hope for that opportunity. David is such a phenomenal bassist. We haven't been able to work together too long, but he's too modest to share that he actually joined the Army as a, uh, to play a different instrument. He's absolutely nailing it, and we couldn't be happier to have him. Nice. Do you mind if I share? So he actually joined the Army to be a sax. He's been playing saxophone on, for the most part. But no, he's it's one of the, oh yeah, on air quotes, he's playing sax now, a joke. <laughs> A lot of the job entails to be a what's called a 42 Romeo is the name of the military occupational specialty in the army. Okay. A lot of it is ceremonial, traditional concert band and all that kind of stuff. And so for us rhythm players that have a background of rock, it's like, okay, there's few and seldom opportunities to actually get to quote unquote rock out or, you know, when I was stationed in Japan for four and a half years leading up to COVID ironically, the novelty of being an American rock band, right? They love that, the foreigners. And a lot of the mission there was com Comra, we call it community relations. But to here, to do it full time is, like Brittany said, this is just such a blessing. Like, this is phenomenal. Like Art said, we didn't really envision it happening. I think we're so fortunate that we have the personnel that we have now. It seems between the four of us that we've all crossed paths in one way or another over the last few years. And there's always some level of word of mouth even in our industry, even in our right. small army band field community. But I think we got the right people now to really, to take what our team is capable of to the next level. And what is the next level? I guess uh, just stay tuned. You know? <laughs> uh, obviously the next step for us, uh, the priority was the, the DWP festivals and, uh, but really we need to get in the studio ASAP. And so we're working on that. We've got all kinds of new music, uh, a whole new sound. And if you were able to check us out this past Friday and this upcoming weekend at Golden Sky, you're going to hear all original music and definitely get a feel and taste for what's going to be on this new album. Nice. And so, yeah, to your point, if somebody would have told me when I was a teenager, band, join the Army, I would think, yeah, that sounds like a marching band to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that you said that so we can clear it up for people listening that, man... Yeah. 
I think about it, I think of all the friends I had in high school that were rockers, that their life didn't go the way it most think it should go, that if they knew that they could go into the Army and be in a band, they might have gone in instead of going the route they went. I think that's actually one of the coolest things about the existence of the Army Band and as a musician. You have to kind of accept when you go to college for music or when you pursue music at any point that you don't really have a lot of control, yeah. right? You might end up Taylor Swift, you might end up nobody playing in your room, right? Yeah. Depending on circumstances or whatever. But. Being able to trust that, and I feel like just by trusting that and letting music lead me, I have ended up in the Army, right? And it's been nice that people that are more vocal about the opportunities, and that's one of the things we're trying to do is be like, look, there's so many opportunities, not just in the Army bands, but like throughout the Army, right? So we can be part of that and share that experience and just talk about how what a blessing music is and how and the journey it takes you on when you trust it right yeah we were talking before the interview about like the jobs and that you can learn in the army and I, most of them i never thought of like you think in the army especially if you're a kid you think of the army as like oh i'm just gonna have somebody telling me what to do and blah 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 and i'm gonna be some grunt but really there's so much opportunity you're exactly right. I think subconsciously most folks are thinking, oh, I'm going to be an infant in the infantry or yeah. a generic green army man or even for the other branches, for instance, like, oh, I'm going to be stuck, you know, swabbing the poop deck or something. But that's what's really amazing about the army. And you've probably heard this before, but we're here to recruit for the greater army, not just the army Banfield. So it's fun to talk about our individual MOS, so it's called. But we're recruiting for 150 jobs that are in the army. I don't even know what they are. I don't have a memorized, right? But I know they're out there. And so if we can use our, like, gifts and talents and everything that we're passionate about, and the Army's found a way to utilize our skills and talents, I promise there's a way that the Army has a spot for you. So we're just here to talk to young people, let them know that they, there's opportunities out there. I was that guy... I mean, granted, I did high school marching band, which is pretty nerdy, but <laughs> when I saw the ROTC guys, I was like, I'm not, oh, I can't be in the military, you know, and then here I am all these years later, and technically, between the Guard and active duty, I've been drumming for the Army for 18 years. Wow. And I'm only 35. What? Yeah, because when you mentioned the timing, like, my son went in 2007. There you go. So we're about, yeah, right around the same time. That's when I went to basic training. and uh, That's when he training. went to basic we training. We might have been this, at the same time. Yeah. That would be funny. That would, small world, you never know. I know, right? And it keeps getting smaller. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, and I think my son was somebody that probably you would never think would go into the Army, but he's a total Army person, like right down to the core. Like, what was his MOS? What was his job? He was originally a mechanic, okay. but now he's PSYOPs. Oh, okay. So he's still in. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's wow. doing the 20 years. That's amazing. He's got less than two left. Well, let him know we said, you know, thank you for his service. You know, it's, it's no, that's no small feat. Uh, yeah, right? Our old first sergeant used to say, uh, what's the percentage of folks that actually swear in and, and say, hey, I'm, I'm willing to? One. Yeah, it's like 1% of right. Americans, right? I, most of them, right? They're like, I'll do the four and done. Okay, right. get what I want out of it and move on. But I also found for people ed educated, and you know this, my son, he's got some great opportunities after that 20 years. Like he's talking to me about jobs that are already offered to him. And like people his age can't even get jobs like that, even if they're, they have degrees and professional and, and so... It is a good idea. No, absolutely, yeah. It's, especially as musicians, I mean, you know, when you're young and a little bit arrogant and you, you, the whole world, your whole future is ahead of you and every opportunity is at your fingertips, I think I had settled in my youth thinking or considering, like, I'm just going to work until I can't work. I'm in a gig and I'm just going to figure it out and make it happen. No concept of financial security or possible future opportunities. Just keep networking and hustling. And I'm from the Los Angeles area, um, Southern California. And that was just the mindset. But I'm so grateful to have this job because the concept or the ability to support a family, to have that job security, and to think, wait a minute, 20 years and a pension and I could potentially do something, you know what I mean? It's, I, like, I wouldn't have this in any other, yeah. It's wild to get the pension and have another career on exactly. top of it. Like most people that don't go into services don't ever have that. For right, sure. right. So... How would you describe how your formation in the band is different than predecessors? 
Oh, well, she I'm likes here. that one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we have a female vocalist, which I like. <laughs> I like it too. Nice. All right, I feel validated. We, I definitely think our genre is different. I keep saying that it's similar to dream theater, but I really don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> my friend said that to me, and I was like, that's going to be my tagline. There um, you go. But Art is an incredible composer. We work as a group to kind of put in our own flares and stuff and add like we work on lyrics together and melodies but a lo- m- most of the music we have like is built from the ground up by art playing a lot of the instruments in his studio once we go to record like he'll bring us a demo track that he's played everything on it's incredible so when we wow. go record we'll play it but it's just kind of amazing to have these incredible musicians here and to create something brand new so we definitely have a different sound all like bottom up from the top down nice and I, i'm really excited about it i think it, it's new without being um off-putting right like so. yeah. there you go i love it and so how about the musicians you meet backstage how do they react to your band and to you guys I think it's been overwhelmingly positive. Just now, Brittany and I went to grab coffee, and she was like, oh, wait, as you were, the girl working there, and we're like, oh, yeah, you heard of us? She's like, everybody around, there's been a buzz. You guys are amazing. Like, you guys wow. are, yeah. So there's been little, there's been a buzz. We've been getting positive reception, not just from audience and festival goers, but yeah, I think it's really cool to be part of this community and for folks to recognize you as you go from festival to festival. For the three of us, our first big festival with this group was this past May in Daytona Beach at Welcome to Rockville. And so then we had the last couple shows in Louisville. I don't know if you were out there. I was at all of them. Yeah. Yep. And that mud in, at Louder. Oh, my Lake, God. Uh, but how about driving on the Daytona Speedway? Oh, that was a blast. <laughs> I think Art and I were like, woo, when we got in those uh, golf carts. And I was joking, like, look at all the fans, right? Because they got all the... It's too bad you didn't have, like, a Humvee to go through the... You know what? That's a great idea, though. Right? Uh, next year. I'm going to ask David to make sure that we get that done. Yeah, next year, bring the Army Humvee and drive... Th- that might you be a little... take video go- yeah. driving on the Daytona Maybe Speedway. Maybe we'll get the outdoor team's buggy. I just wanted to also add, Brittany is, is too modest. And she's one of the best vocalists I've ever worked with, in and outside of the Army. And before I even nice. got a chance to work with her, we'd heard good things. You always hear things about folks before you get a chance to meet them. And a seasoned army bassist that I worked with before, that I respect his musical opinion on top of his leadership choices, he was like, oh, this, yeah, she's one of the best I've ever worked with in 20 years. And I was still skeptical until I met her. (laughs) And then the icing on the cake is just her personality and the whole team's personality and charisma and how well we all get along. That's key. That's key right there. And so... In uh, any band. You're exactly right. Yeah, it's all in some ways almost more important, right? Yeah, is, is that camaraderie and just You're not being able to last. respect each other? Exactly. And then we spend so much time on the road, cramped into the truck, right? We gotta all get along. And I think we asked David specifically when he did his audition earlier this year, like, "Hey, how do you feel about, you know, driving long distances and you know all these other kinds of situations and just getting to know who he was as a person? What are your favorite musical genres? What are your guilty pleasures that you like to listen to?" Yeah, or whatever it is. Because sometimes, whether you're in a band, a job, in the army, the people you have to work with, you don't necessarily like them. You you have to do that. I think that's true everywhere. I was on cruise ships and definitely found some people that we didn't mesh. The biggest difference that I found in the army is when you don't like someone, you 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 got to get over it, right? Like yeah. you like you have to be in the room with them on cruise ships. If I didn't, like, mesh with someone, I could, like, walk away if they were messing with me or or making me upset. When you're in the Army, you have to overcome that and make it work. So this is a blessing that we've been able to create this team of people that we all know the quality of work is going to be great. And then also they got good personalities, right? What is it, the truck test or whatever? Like, you got to be able to stand each other in a van for however many days you're traveling and... I think we all pass. Without Except maybe killing me, each I like, other. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to do that too. <laughs> I was saying, I was joking. I was like, so far right now. Right. No. I think, yeah, it's just been a really honest environment and a really collaborative environment. And to be honest, we're just scratching the surface. What you, all, whatever accolades we've heard so far, we, I think we're all still super humble or trying to stay humble and appreciative. But I'd like everybody, oh yeah, except Brady, no, I'm just kidding. But 
Uh, yeah, I just we're there's so much potential in this ensemble, and I'm I not saying it. that as somebody that happens to be drumming for the group. I, I mean that as somebody with my own years of experience in the army and the, whatever bands I played with in the Southern California area, you know, when I was younger and all that. And I'm more than excited about the future. It's pretty cool, and you're right about going on the road because any band or anything you do, if you're together and and you guys even more so because you're like. You're trained professionals with guns, so you better get along. <laughs> they, they keep the guns locked away <laughs> until we use them. So. <laughs> well, there. But you still probably have like twenty thousand ways you can kill with your hands, so you have to get along. Yeah, well, we can't talk about that. No, I know, right? <laughs> so, anything else you want to share with the listeners? We haven't covered already. That's important for them to know and how they can check you guys out, where you're going to be next, your new music, all that good stuff. Uh, sure, I'll start, and then you can cover what I've missed. Um, we are AYW Music on Instagram and Facebook, so you can find us there. Uh, Art and I both have the password, so we wa- <laughs> we'll say hi if you say hi back. And then we will eventually be releasing an album on Spotify. Currently, As You Were does have music on Spotify. That is the old iteration of the band. Okay. Please listen to that. We are a different sound, so get ready, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so we're performing at Golden Sky this weekend, like we mentioned, Friday or Saturday, twelve four. Here, you take. Jack Daniels. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. So next weekend, next Saturday, Jack Daniels stage, twelve forty. Nice. We'll be there. Yeah. Can't wait. wait tell, <laughs> tell them about all the. You, you already got so much music on deck, right? Like. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I I uh, I started making music for this band specifically, like. As soon as I knew I was, I re-enlisted to, to come to this band. As soon as I knew I got the gig, I started making all this music that I thought would be cool, like for the band. So yeah, I already had three songs before I came here, and then they just kept pouring out and pouring out. So we've already got a full album. Nice. We, there's still songs that we haven't even like made lyrics for, so it's like they're all there. So yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to share them. I'm super excited. Yeah, so just stay tuned, Instagram and Facebook page, AYW Music, and you'll see where we'll be performing next and when and where to check out our new album. I love it. Thanks for being here at Aftershock and all the DWP festivals. Most importantly, thank you for your service to our country and to us, civilians. Yeah, thank you so much for the support. Yeah, we really appreciate that. And thanks for being on the Adventures of Pipe Man. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man. On W4CY Radio.